Yo, it's your boy Marcus, aka Just One. Marcus on the Just One channel, and today we are going to be rebuilding the Golden State Warriors around Steph to try to get him another ring. So as of the day that I'm filming this, which is January 23rd, the Warriors are just under a 500 team after having a tough loss against the Brooklyn Nets. That makes them the 10th seed in the West. So it's not the best outcome for the reigning NBA champions. Stephen Curry though has been out with an injury for a lot of the season and he's their main offensive guy who pushes their offense to make them be so good. So that's mainly why they haven't succeeded. So I'm guessing for the rest of this year with their whole lineup together they'll be able to get a higher playoff spot here maybe around seven eight or even the six seed some of their younger guys though like james wiseman and moses moody have not really worked out for them well james wiseman in particular was the second overall pick so they probably thought by now he'd be more of an important piece in their lineup but they don't think he's nba ready yet and moses moody who is actually having a pretty decent shooting year they're not really relying on as much probably because of his defense, which is unfortunate. Here's going to be the lineup for the rest of the year, though. I just had 2K put it together and then I took some minutes away from Draymond and Kevon Looney to give them to Kuminga because he's actually having a solid year and is playable for them. So, yeah, I think I heard something about the Warriors barely ever do trades at the deadline. Like they usually do their stuff in the offseason. So I'm going to try to keep this somewhat realistic. I'm not going to do a trade this deadline. But in this offseason and for potentially future deadlines, I will be open to doing more trades. But let's see in this first year if the Warriors have what it takes to get back into a playoff spot. First season is wrapped. Luka's your MVP. Paulo, Rookie of the Year. Westbrook, six man. Giannis, Depoy. Trey Jones, most improved. Joe Mazzula, Coach of the Year. Here's All-NBA first, All-NBA second, and All-NBA third. So we do get Steph on there still with All-NBA first, or All-Defensive first looking like that, and All-Defensive second looking like this. And here's your All-Rookie teams if you want to take a look at any of those guys. Did we make a play-in spot or a playoff spot? We made a four seed, so we had a huge jump up from the 10 seed around the trade deadline. Stats on the season, Steph obviously went crazy, putting up almost 30 a night, 28, six and six, shooting 50, 40, 90. So he led us into that play at four seed this year. Clay still played really well, 21 points on 40% from three. Jordan Poole as the six man, 20 points, four assists, shooting pretty well, not as good as last year. Wiggins is a good glue guy for everyone and he his shooting improves too, shoots 40% this year. Kuminga had a pretty solid year. His points go up, but his efficiency kind of goes down a bit. Draymond on the last year of his deal, I do not want to extend him. I don't think Draymond is a very good player anymore. So maybe a thing I could do is do a sign and trade. But yeah, from his prime days over here, I think he's just slowly been getting worse and worse. Here's DiVincenzo's minutes. He did not shoot very well from the field, but he shot pretty well from three. So we'll take that. And then the only other guys that play were Kavon Looney who played pretty solid defense, shot efficient from the field, and Jermichael Green also played for us, who also didn't shoot too bad. So round one against the Mavericks, a team that I think could potentially beat the Warriors in real life because they have a guy named Luka Doncic, but Stephen Curry is definitely in the game that he's a lower overall, but in real life, I think he could give him a run for his money. So let's see what happens in this first round here. Game one, they win. Game two, they win. Game three, can we make a comeback? We do not. And game four, are we gonna get swept in the first round? We do get swept. So the Warriors get swept in the 2023 playoffs by the Mavericks, which I could see the Pelicans actually, I think have a really good chance of coming out this year if they're not injured. And the Celtics also obviously have a great chance of coming out this year. So the champions are the Celtics in seven with Jalen Brown as your finals MVP. All right, 2023 draft lottery. I don't think we would have any high picks projected here. And I do not see us anywhere in the lottery, which makes sense. We do have the 24th pick, which we could potentially pick up a really good guy with or a decent guy with. I think I'm going to take this guy, Sid Cisse. He's going to be overseas and ineligible, but he's 19 years old. So once he comes in, he'll have more talent. He's not a good inside or mid-range shooter, but his three points is good and his perimeter defense is good, which is a solid thing that fits this Warriors roster. So yeah, I'm going to pick up Sid Cisse with the 24th pick. Here's what the top seven looks like. If any of you want to take a look to see where any of these guys went, if they went to one of your favorite teams. So Sid comes in as a 69. By the time he's ready to play though, I feel like he'll be in the 70s. Team player options, Draymond declines, DiVincenzo declines. I'm going to accept Kuminga, Wiseman, and Moody. So Draymond wants 25 
mil. He has one offer from the Heat, which isn't really good. I know he's looking for a payday in real life, but I honestly don't think he'll get a huge contract. So I'm gonna try to get him back for two years until he's 35 years old on a front-loaded deal, starting at 21 mil and ending off just under 20 mil. And it looks like he'll agree to that right away. I feel like Dante DiVincenzo has been a solid player for them. So I'm gonna see if I can get him on like a three-year deal at five mil backloaded, ending off at 5.5. And he agrees to that. That is going to be it for this free agency period. Let's look at the player progression. So obviously Steph's starting to regress, same with Clay and Draymond. So the main three guys of that Warriors dynasty are getting old now and obviously regressing. But some of our younger guys are getting better, which is good to look forward to. I think the goal of this is maybe in a year or two, move on from Clay and Draymond and bring in another star or two to pair with Curry, maybe even trade Jordan Poole because he's going to be a higher overall and have a lot of value to try to get Steph that last ring. And then we'll still have these young guys like Wiseman, hopefully Kuminga and Moody to build with and Patrick Baldwin Jr. potentially to build with for the future after Steph. So let's sim to this second season, which is 2023-24 and get this new lineup ready. Here's what the lineup's looking like for this second season. I did it all myself this time. We're going to get Curry at 33, Poole sliding into that starting lineup with Clay Rigg Progressing, getting 31. Wiggins at the 3 of 29. Draymond still starting, but only getting 26. With Kavon Looney still starting, getting 28. Then I have Clay as a sixth man with 23 a night. Kuminga, seventh man with 20 a night. Wiseman finally getting some minutes. I need him to progress because once Draymond is gone and we maybe don't want to play Kavon Looney that much anymore, I need him to be able to get those minutes. So he's getting 20 a night as well. Dante DiVincenzo, 15, and then Moses Moody, 15 as well. Clay is on the last year of his deal. So I might at the trade deadline look for a Clay Thompson trade if there's any buying teams that need a shooter and want to pay a decent price for him. But if not, I'll probably just sim to the end of the year and see how, where we end up. Second season is about to be wrapped. And so far we're 52 and 19. So a 50 win record for this team. One game left against the Kings and we win. So we go 53 and 29, Luka MVP, Wembenyama rookie of the year on the Pistons, Amen Thompson six man on the Blazers, Giannis Depoy on the Bucks, Taylor Horton Tucker most improved on the Mavericks and Joe Mazzulli is your coach of the year. Here's all NBA first team, all NBA second team and all NBA third. So no Steph this year. Here's all defensive first and all defensive second with your all rookie teams looking like this. So I'm guessing we were the second seed we were. I did stop at the trade deadline to potentially look for a trade, but everyone was playing so well. I just couldn't do it. Like Steph, 26 points, six rebounds, seven assists, shooting 50, 40, 90 still. Jordan Poole's three point percentage went up tremendously from 35% last year to 43% this year. And he's still putting up 20 a night. Klay Thompson off the bench was just like a flamethrower. 17 points, two rebounds, two assists, shot 46% from three. Wiggins also had a higher three point percentage this year too, which was surprising because last year he jumped up by quite a bit and he still put up 16 a night. Kuminga also improved. His field goal percentage was the same, but his three point percentage has been slowly improving his whole career and he's putting up more points a night now. Wiseman had a pretty decent season, 11.6 rebounds, one block, shooting the ball 50 from the field and about 32 from three. Moses Moody had a really good year shooting, seven points, two rebounds, uh, 41 from three. Kevon Looney, solid defense, has pretty much the same numbers. Actually, his field goal percentage was great this year. DiVincenzo also played much better this year, shooting 44 from three and 39 from the three-point line. And Draymond, okay, at the trade deadline, Draymond was shooting 36% from three, and he had like a 50% field goal percentage, but I guess he just dropped off a cliff after the trade deadline. But yeah, he still plays, plays pretty solid defense at his age, and I'm pretty sure that was all of our guys. So who would we have in this first round? It is going to be the Pelicans, which will be a tough matchup because they do still have Ingram and Zion there. So let's see how this goes. Game one, we win. Game two, we lose. Game three, we lose. Game four, we win. Game five, we lose. We could face another first round elimination here. Game six, we win. And game seven, we win. So we make it out of the first round. Now we have the six seeded Houston Rockets who've been progressing here. They have 88 Jalen Green, 85 Shangun, and then the same guys pretty much in real life with a rookie, 79 Cameron Whitmore. Game one, we win. Game two, we win. Game three, we lose. Game four, we lose. Game five, we win. Game six, we lose. Another game seven. Can we pull it out again this time? 
we cannot so the rockets eliminate us in the second round to go against the memphis grizzlies in the western conference finals that is unfortunate tatum is your east mvp jaws your west mvp and the championship of the 2024 season is the celtics so they go back to back with tatum as your finals mvp this time so here's what the draft lottery ended up looking like i don't even think we have a single pick yeah the grizzlies have our 28th pick there and i do not see us anywhere else i think it is time to move on from Draymond, so i'm gonna look for a trade before the draft starts the hawks would trade me a future first and the 14th pick in the draft i feel like that is a bit too much especially if they already have a power forward here so they do still have john collins but other than that jalen johnson is kind of a young guy so maybe they would do this i think what would be more fair is maybe taking away that second first round pick and maybe adding on these two second round picks instead to make it more fair here so yeah we're going to do this trade with the hawks at the nba draft trading draymond green for the 14th overall pick and two second round picks i think i'm going to take Bo fall with the 14th overall pick he has all-star potential and he's a decent inside scorer he has good defensive numbers as a big and I don't know if James Wiseman is gonna work out, so I think I'm gonna take him with the 14th overall pick. Here's what the top seven looks like for this 2024 draft, if you wanna stop and take a look at it. Bofall comes in as a 75, so he can immediately be a backup guy. I picked this guy up, Ramel Lloyd, in the second round. I'm gonna accept him. And then Matt Beverly I took in the second round too. I'm gonna accept him. And we get Sid Cisse here now, which I'll accept as well. Team player options, I will accept Kavon Looney. I may use him in a trade. Kuminga accepted, Moody accepted, and Patrick Baldwin will get accepted too. But Ryan Rollins, I am going to move on from. I will give James Wiseman the qualifying offer and hope he doesn't expect to get like 20 plus mil. So I adjusted some stuff with the salary cap settings before this thing started because a lot of the times like players who shouldn't want that much money want way too much money. And Clay here only wants 20 mil. He's a vet. He's a four star system match. I think I will bring him back on a one year 20, mil, 20 million dollar deal just because he fits the system well and he can be a solid flamethrower guy off the bench. Clay agrees to that deal. It says James Wiseman wants around 26 mil. So I may skip a couple days in free agency and see if I can get that down to around 20. So we're at day 10 of free agency and Wiseman wants around 24 mil. But if I get into it, he wants less than that. So I'm gonna see if I can get him at like 18 for, okay, he's not gonna do that for five years. What if we do it for like four years? What if we do 19 for four years bird ending off at around 23 and a half? He will accept that. So I'm okay with that for now and if he doesn't work out i will look to trade him so player progression steph still slightly regressing clay does regress by two which i was expecting which is why i only gave him one year deal but everyone else is pretty much progressing literally everyone else is progressing except for my some of my rookies here who just stay the same so that is good to see let's sim to the third season now i think worst case scenario i might have to look for a jordan pool trade to like significantly improve the roster if i don't do that i would just not bring clay back next year and see if i can sign a max guy to pair with steph let's go to this third season and get the new roster ready here is what the third season lineup is looking like pretty much the same as last year except we have kuminga coming into that starting four spot with draymond gone now and Wiseman with that new contract, I am going to give him a shot at the starting center role with Looney as a sixth man, Clay the seventh man now, and Moody getting 15, DiVincenzo 15, and Patrick Baldwin getting some good run here at 15 as well to round off the rotation. I'm hoping the way I've been developing these young guys, just letting them get some minutes off the bench and now progressing them into these bigger roles works out but we will sim potentially to the trade deadline, most likely to the end of the season and see where we're at if we have a good record. Okay, so I'm at the trade deadline, we're 32 and 24, as you can see in the, well, as you did see in the bottom left there. If we go to the standings, that's good enough for fourth in the West. I don't think we have the rosters to compete with teams like Houston now, who just have a lot of really good guys. Like they have Desmond Bain coming off the bench. The Timberwolves, they, they have Ant and, cat which are pretty much their two main guys but yeah the nuggets with michael porter jr aaron gordon Jokic, and then solid guards like nashawn highland and jamal murray the hawks are currently the eighth seed in the east and they no longer have trey young so trey has moved away from the hawks he is not there anymore and they could be looking to get some young assets back to start a new rebuild mode with some new guys they did end up with zach levine but clearly it's not working out for them so maybe they like to offload some of these older guys here like maybe vucevic dejounte or zach levine to try to reset with a younger core to pair with onyeka okongwu and 
DeAndre Hunter. So I'm going to try to trade Jordan Poole, the center I picked up in the first round, Bo Fall, and a 2029 unprotected first and a 2027 lottery protected first for DeJounte Murray and Nikola Vucevic. Jordan Poole is shooting the ball really well and is a really good offensive player, but as you can see, his perimeter defense is a B minus, below position, position average, and besides Steph, it just doesn't work out. Both fall, I don't really need. I have Wiseman who's progressing now with Kavon Looney still there as a backup. And DeJounte Murray has A-plus perimeter defense and still shoots the ball really well. Like this year, he's putting up 19 points, shooting almost 50, 40, 90. And then Vucevic can slide into a starting center role while Wiseman still progresses. He's having a really good season too, almost shooting 40% from three and putting up great numbers. So yeah, since the goal of this is to try to win another ring with Steph, I think I'd be willing to do this deal and kind of get a bit older here, but get some more experience to get rid of these younger pieces here. So we're going to do this trade with the Hawks and they agree. Here's what the new look lineup looks like post-trade. Steph at the one, obviously. DeJounte coming at the starting two spot with Wiggins and Kuminga so at the three and four. And then Vucevic starting in that starting five spot or sliding to that starting five spot, getting 31 a night. Six man, Clay Thompson getting 19 with Wiseman getting 17 now. Moody getting 17 as well. DiVincenzo getting 15. And then rounding it off is Patrick Balling win Jr getting 13 with unfortunately Kevon Ludi sliding out of the rotation but if Wiseman isn't playing good in the playoffs he can slide back in there so let's sim the rest of the season and hopefully these trades worked out for us we have one more game left on the season here we're 45 and 36 currently let's see if we can go 46 and 36 and we can so Garland is your MVP this year Matas Buzelis is your rookie of the year Lillard six man on the Blazers now Giannis Depoy Brandon Miller most improved and JB Bickerstaff coach of the year here is all NBA first team all NBA second team and all NBA third team so none of our guys there here's all defensive first all defensive second and here is what the rookie teams look like if you want to stop and take a look so with a 46 win record we still end up as a three C. so honestly it's pretty good Steph has a big drop in his scoring numbers here but he's still shooting crazy efficiently and becoming a better playmaker now so that's good to see DeJounte Murray since the all-star break his points came down a bit but that's pretty understandable he still put up two steals a night though shot really efficiently all honestly shot better from three in our system so that's good to see Vucevic before all-star also his points dropped a lot his rebounds dropped as well which is understandable with the guys we have on our team and his shooting actually dropped too, which is kind of unfortunate, but it's still pretty good. Here's Kuminga's stats for the year. His points per game go up, his rebounds go up, but his three-point percentage and field goal went down. So maybe that bigger role he got, he wasn't ready for yet, but one more year will be good for him. Wiggins shoots the ball insanely well. 14 points, five rebounds, three assists with a steal. Shoots 53 from the field. 47 from three, but his three point or his uh, free throw is atrocious. Wiseman also didn't have a great year. 13 points, eight rebounds, a block a night, but his shooting was just not good. Clay continues to be a flamethrower off the bench though. 12 points on 47, 46, 89 shooting. Patrick Baldwin in the role that he got actually pretty really well, played pretty well. Eight points, three rebounds, 43 from the field, 38 from three. And then Moses Moody still plays really solid. Well, he still shoots really solid. He's not the best defender though. And DiVincenzo also had another good year for us, which is pretty good. So round one against the Lakers, do they still have LeBron and AD? They do, but the rest of their roster is just not good at all. It's all 70s. So hopefully Steph can carry here with our other role guys. Game one, we lose. Game two, we win. Game three, we lose. Game four, we lose. Can we come back from a 3-1? Game five, we win. Game six, we lose. So out in the first round, again, even though we made those trades to make our team better in the current, which is unfortunate. The Lakers, though, make it to the Western Conference Finals, but get eliminated by the Timberwolves. And your 2025, I believe, champion is the Timberwolves in four with Cat as your finals MVP. Let's see what the draft lottery is looking like this year. I don't think we really have any significant picks. We only have the 22nd pick from us, so could get a decent guy there again. I don't think I want to trade any of these guys because I think one full year with them and we'll have a really solid record and a solid chemistry with everybody to be good. So I may just pick up my guy at 22, I believe, here and see what free agency is looking like with my salary. So there's this guy, Jace Richardson, who is a point guard, projected to go around 30, 19 years old. 
but he has Hall of Fame ceiling and pretty decent grades here. So I think I'm gonna give him a chance and see if he'll progress throughout this video if we get that far. He comes in as a 72 at 19 years old, which honestly isn't too bad. Team player options, all these guys we're going to accept. Kuminga and Moses Moody will both get the qualifying offer. Even though I have Vucevic and Wiseman in the lineup now, I think I wanna get Kuminga back on just a flat year deal for like five mil, just in case one of those guys foul out. I still have a solid center to put in the rotation or I wanna trade Vucevic maybe next off season. Actually, I think he's on a one year deal. So maybe just not keep Vucevic next year. So we're going to give him that. And he agrees. I'm going to get Kuminga back on a five-year deal starting at 25 mil, ending at around 33. I think he'll progress pretty well. Like he has shown flashes of being a good three-point shooter. And I think he could get there soon in the future again in his starting role. So if not, I can just look to trade him. I'm sure a team will want him. So yeah, we're going to give him that offer then moses moody as a bench guy i'll give 14 mil for three years back ending at around 15.4 and that could be a contract i could maybe use to get a better guy maybe this year or next year to help our rotation out if he's just too much of a liability on defense and they both agree to those contracts actually i cannot sign moses moody because i do not have enough room under the hard cap so i don't know what just happened there I guess I'm gonna have to cap hold Moses Moody. Yeah, I'm just gonna have to hope I get him back on the qualifying offer here. So let's see if I do. Day 12 coming up and I do get him back. So at least we get him to be a good bench guy for us. Steph regresses down to a 93, which is understandable. I think I need a win either this year or next year. So I really need to potentially make some big trades here, but Kuminga's progressing and Wiseman is progressing. So is Moody. So if all these guys can start to like hold their own, maybe we could just have a good push with Steph as our main driver. So let's sim to the 2026 season, 2025, 26 season, which I believe will be the fourth year of this rebuild and see what we can do. All right, so I've gotten the young guys to progress kind of where I want them to. The only thing I'm going to change with this rotation is take away Kavon Looney's minutes and distribute them against Patrick Baldwin Jr., Dante DiVincenzo, and Sid Cisse, who I drafted a couple years back because I don't need three centers in my rotation. So yeah, here's what the lineup looks like. Pretty much the same as last year after the trade deadline, except now we have Sid Cisse coming in. I did change the system proficiency from perimeter centric, I believe it was at, to balance because Vucevic just looks better there. And I feel like it would be better to have a system that fits most of the players abilities so we're gonna sim here to the trade deadline if it's not working out kuminga might be a guy that has to get traded for a star player okay so i'm stopping before the trade that de trade deadline at january 19th we're 24 and 18 which is good enough for sixth in the west and if we go to these player stats over here whoops that was rookie report if we go to these player stats over here and just look at the numbers everyone here okay i don't know why it's just so messed up is shooting the ball really well as you can see their three pointers except for kuminga and james wiseman but james wiseman is the center so he has some more leeway there i cannot accept that for kuminga though he's been dropping since his third season here two years in a row so i may look right now for a star or a huge package to get jonathan kuminga for a star player the phoenix suns are 13th in the west they're 16 and 29 and they're a rebuilding team i'm gonna see if i can put together a package to bring deandre ayton here and maybe move vucevic to the four because he's not that good of a defender at the five and then i'll have eight in there at the five and just have a big four and five lineup with guys who can shoot and play good defense so here's the package we got kuminga wiseman and this young guy I picked up that hasn't played for me yet matt beverly for deandre ayton who's honestly having a really good year 16 points 11 rebounds uh two assists with half a steal half a block shooting insanely well from three if you look at his ratings here he has a for post defense and a for rebounding which is position average or higher and divincenzo isn't playing well for me this year so i could bring kobe white in too to be a different look at the backup point guard spot so yeah as you can see here like i said kuminga is not shooting well from three and wiseman is not shooting well from me well from three either which is like the whole thing of this warriors system that they are they have good three-point shooters except for draymond 
So yeah, we're gonna see if they do this trade and they agree. Here's what the lineup is looking like post Kuminga Wiseman trade. Steph at the one, Murray at the two, Wiggins at the three, Vucevic at the four, and Aiton at the five with Moody as a six man, Kavon Looney back in the lineup. Kobe White in the lineup as the new backup point guard, and Sid Cisse as the ninth man, who's actually going off this season, shooting 51% from three, and then Patrick Baldwin Jr. as the last man in the rotation, who's also playing pretty well. Let's sim to the end of the year now. Hopefully that didn't just mess everything up, but we will see in time. Fourth season is about to be wrapped. We are 50 and 31 with one game left against the Jazz, and we win, so we go 51-31. Wemby is an MVP in the league now. Vasala Bagayoko, Rookie of the Year, Max Lewis, six Man, Wemby Depoy as well, Amen Thompson, Most Improved, and Darvin Ham, Coach of the Year. Here's your All-NBA First Team, All-NBA Second Team, and All-NBA Third Team, so none of our guys. All-Defensive First, All-Defensive Second, still none of our guys, and did we get a rookie? I don't know if we played one, we do not. So we end up as the three seed again, hopefully it's enough this year to make a deep run. Curry still leading the way with scoring, putting up 21 a night. Eight assists though, which I'm pretty sure is a career high. And actually, no, it's not. 8.5 is his career high, so we're just under that. But shooting the ball insane still. DeJounte Murray also still a really good piece of this team, shooting really well, playing good defense. Aiton comes in. Let's look at his split stats here before All-Star. So he puts up more numbers, uh, less rebounds, a bit more assists, more puts up a full block a night playing for us. His field goal percentage goes up, but his three-point percentage fell off a cliff, which is not good. Vucevic as the power forward played pretty solid. 13.7 rebounds, shooting 37 from three, over 50 from the field. Moses Moody off the bench now is pretty lights out for us. 12.3 rebounds, shooting 47 from the field, 40 from three. Andrew Wiggins, his points per game are going down constantly every year, probably because we're bringing up other guys who can score, but he's still being really efficient for us. Kobe White came in as my new backup point guard since, uh, what was his name, DiVincenzo wasn't playing well. He had pretty much the same stats, but his shooting got way better when he came here. So his field goal went up to 50% and he shot 40 from three in our system. So that's great to see. Patrick Baldwin is still a great three point shooter for us. He's not the best defender though, but that's okay. And whoops, Sid Cisse, insane season. Shoots 50% from three and plays really good defense in the few minutes he got off the bench. So he could be a solid guy for us in these next couple of years. And yeah, DiVincenzo played for us, but then I took him out of the lineup because he just wasn't playing well. So round one against the Nuggets, which should be tough because I'm sure, yeah, they have a 96 Jokic still, 83 Jamal Murray. They picked up Zach Levine, 86 overall. They got Buddy Heal as a sharpshooter. And I don't know if I mentioned Aaron Gordon still there. So yeah, we match up pretty well with them though. So this could be a good series. Let's see what happens here. Game one, we lose. Game two, we win. Game three, we win game four we win game five we win so we make it out of the first round to go against the seven seed utah jazz who have 83 colin sexton 82 turquavion smith 88 lowry marketing still 80 john isaac and they have 89 pascal siakam now so another series that should be pretty interesting let's see what happens here game one we win game two we lose game three we win game four we lose game five we lose. Come on, man. Is this team really not going to make a deep run? Game six, we win. And finally, game seven. Can we make it to the Western Conference Finals? We win. So we get out of there. Thank God we have the four seed OKC Thunder here who have 95 Shea, Josh Giddy, who's up to a 91 now, 79 Usman Jiang, 84 Xavier Booker, and an 88 Chet Holmgren. So our fives match up our fours match up we have the better three they have the slightly better two and at this point they do slightly have the better one so hopefully we can just grind it out game one we lose game two we lose game three we lose come on man am i really gonna get swept here okay we win a game can we somehow make a comeback we cannot so we lose to the thunder in four games in the western conference finals 
and the Thunder are your champions with Josh Giddy as your finals MVP. Here's what the draft lottery looks like. Celtics got the first overall pick, so maybe they lost Tatum or Brown and got really bad. We have the 24th pick though, so another decent guy we can get there. With the 24th pick, I picked up this guy, Jeremiah Green, who's an 82, and then this guy was in the second round, Aaron Rowe, well pickup, who's 18 years old, 71 overall. Wiggins declines his player option. He will be brought back though, and Sid C say I will accept his. Ramel Lloyd and and Patrick Baldwin both getting qualifying offers. So Steph is a free agent. We were not able to get him another championship yet, but no team is giving him a real offer. So I will give him an offer for two more years flat for around like 40 mil if he'll accept it just to give us one more chance to win with him before he's just way too old i'm gonna bring wiggins back on a four-year deal starting at 30 mil ending at 25.5 so when he's 35 years old he'll be making around 25 mil i just realized ayton and vucevic are both free agents so i am going to have to bring them back i'll give ayton like 31 mil for five years back. You should accept that. I'm going to bring Vucevic back on a one year, $20 million deal. And if he's not playing well, maybe I can trade him. Then Moody, I'm going to try to get on a four year deal starting at 14 mil, ending at 16. So it looks like everyone agrees so far. Will I be able to sign them all though? I can. Then finally, I'm going to bring Patrick Baldwin Jr. back on a five year deal starting at nine mil and ending at around 12. So here's what player progression is looking like. Steph is still above a 90 overall, which is crazy. Vucevic goes down though. So does Kevon Looney, which is not great, but everyone else is still pretty decent. Gonna sim to probably the second last year here. Even if Steph retires, I can void it. So I may have to look for another huge trade here to try to put us over the top because clearly we didn't have enough to get out of the West Finals. Okay, so I'm about a couple weeks before the trade deadline. I didn't show the lineup because it was the same as last year. But right now we're 18 and 29, which I'm probably sure is not even a playing spot. So yeah, we're like three games out of a playing spot. So I definitely need to try to do some big trades here to put this roster back on the map. The Celtics no longer have Tatum, but they still have Jalen Brown. They're 12th in the East and they're a rebuilding team. So maybe they'd be looking to do a swap with us to try to make both of us a bit better right now. And I can give them some future assets back too since they're in rebuild mode and I still wanna buy right now to try to compete with Steph. I don't know why this 2031 pick is so low valued if we're not even a playing team right now, but this is the best offer I can make. I doubt they would accept it and they do not. Oh, Vucevic has a no trade clause. So the Bucks right now are a really good team. They have Jason Tatum, Jalen Brunson, Jalen Suggs, Clint Capella, 90 overall Franz Wagner and 79 Malik Beasley. But this is the best trade I can make right now. And this is probably gonna be like the last season cause Steph may retire or even after this, it'll just be really hard to make a good teamwork with the assets I have. So we're gonna get a little bit fantasy style here and trade for Franz Wagner and Malik Beasley for Wiggins, Vucevic and a first and they agree. So here's what the new lineup's looking like. Curry, Murray, Wagner, Sid Cisse, who is a low-key underrated player. Like, look at his ratings here. Absolutely insane. Aiton with Moody as a sixth man, Kobe White seventh man, Malik Beasley eighth man, Kevon Looney ninth man, and Patrick Baldwin Jr. as the tenth man. I'm pretty sure our system proficiency still looks really good. Four and a half stars. Is there anything five stars? There is not, so we're gonna stick with balance here and hopefully we can make a comeback. Season is wrapped, Wemby MVP again, Marcus Johnson, Rookie of the Year, Isaiah Collier, six man, Wemby, Depoy, Isaiah Collier, most improved, Mike Brown, Coach of the Year, here is your All-NBA first, All-NBA second, and All-NBA third, so none of our guys, All-Defensive first looking like this, and All-Defensive second looking like this, with your All-Rookie team looking like this, and your, yeah, your All-Rookie second looking like this. We imp slightly improved, we got to an eight seed, so we do have two chances here to make a, play in a playoff spot. I do not really care to show all the stats anymore because we're near the end of it. So if you wanna stop and take a look here, everyone's pretty much been playing the same. Uh, Murray kinda got a bit worse shooting from three. Ayan had a great year though shooting from three. Honestly, I'll stop for anything that stands out. He shot 39 from three, which is really good. And yeah, other than that, everyone just played really solid. So first play-in game against the Blazers. They have 92 Amen Thompson, 89 Shaden Sharp. That is an insane backcourt with 81 Quentin Grimes, 82 Patrick Williams, and 81 Basala Bagayoka. We're better at the three and the five. 
but they match up evenly with us at the one and two. So hopefully it is enough for us. Simulate through game and we get out of there. So we are the solidified seven seed in the West going against the Rockets in the first round who have 78 Juan Nunez, 93 Jalen Green, 82 Cam Whitmore, 86 Jabari Smith, and 88 Alperin Shengun. Let's see how this goes. Game one, we win. Game two, we win. Game three, we win. Game four, we lose. Game five, we lose. Game six, we lose. Are we really about to get reverse swept? Game seven, we lose. Like, come on, bro. This game is so dumb. You get me reverse swept in the first round after being up 3-0. Like, that's just so ridiculous. Pacers win. Tyrese is your finals MVP. Steph, I'd imagine. Well, okay, Steph doesn't retire. So we're going to do one more year here with Steph on the team and see what we can make happen. All I had this year was a second round pick. I'm not going to pick this guy up. Let's look at these team player options. Sid, we're accepting. Jace, we're accepting. And Aaron Rowe, we might as well accept him too. Let's look at these qualifying offers. We'll bring back Ramel Lloyd. Maybe he can be a good deep bench guy for us. Kavon Looney is a free agent. I'll bring him back here. He agrees. Kobe White is also a free agent. I'll bring him back as well. He agrees. Ramel Lloyd accepts his qualifying offer. Steph is finally below a 90 overall. This is really our last chance here with this roster. I don't know why they're not really performing that well. Maybe it's just how some of them are paired together, but everyone can shoot and a lot of the guys play really good defense for their respective positions. So I don't understand why it's not working out for them. We're just gonna let uh, 2K do this lineup here. I'll run a 10 man and I'll give the bench 50 utilization for the season so our players don't get too tired out here. So yeah, that looks good to me. We actually don't have center minutes here, so I might immediately look for a trade for Malik Beasley. Like what's his perimeter D? Yeah, it's not that good. I'll try to trade Malik Beasley and maybe Kavon Looney for a better backup center. So right away, the 76ers offer Zubac up here. So we're gonna do this trade. Malik Beasley, Kavon Looney, two seconds for Zubac and Chuma Okiki. So yeah, here's what the last year lineup's looking like. Steph back to a 90 uh, with 33 a night. DeJounte 32, Wagner 33. Patrick Baldwin Jr., he doesn't have good defensive stats, so I'm gonna swap his minutes with Sid Cisse here because Sid Cisse has really good defensive stats and is still a good shooter. Aiton at the five, Moses Moody six man with Zubac, Ramel Lloyd, Kobe White, and Patrick Baldwin Jr. rounding it off. So actually, let's look at this system proficiency here just to make sure it's okay. Still four and a half stars and nothing is five stars. So let's sim this last season and hopefully these guys can make it work with one full year. So I stopped at the trade deadline. We have slightly over a winning record, but I feel like what's holding us back is Patrick Baldwin just is not a good perimeter defender or post defender. So even though I'd be trading a really good player like Moses Moody, I get a starting power forward back in Aaron Gordon who has B plus perimeter D and B plus pose a defense and still is a pretty decent offensive player, or honestly, really good offensive player. We also get B-Ball Paul back here who probably won't end up playing for me though. I feel like this makes us a better team overall. So we're going to do this trade with the Celtics at the deadline. Last season is about to be wrapped. We're 41 and 40. So pretty disappointing. One game left against the Blazers and we lose. So we go 500 record, 41-41. Here's your MVP, rookie of the year, six man of the year. Wembenyama is your depoy, most improved looking like that. And your coach of the year there. Here's all NBA first, all NBA second, all NBA third, all defensive first, all defensive second, and there's your rookie teams. We are a nine seed this time, so we only have one chance to make it out of here. So let's see what happens. First game against the Timberwolves, who still have a 98 jaw, and they're a playing team. 84 Malachi Branham, 82 DeAndre Hutton, Hunter, 86 John Collins, 83 Ken Douglas. Our lineup looks better all around, except for the one and the four so can we make it out of here simulate through game we can so we have one more game against the clippers here let's see who they have 89 carson wallace 86 scotty middleton 83 caleb love 98 Giannis, 84 bobby portis and this is a playing team like how am i supposed to be good if teams like this are in the playing i don't even care anymore simulate through game and we lose so yeah this rebuild is done. I, I tried to think like win now with Steph. If this was like a realistic rebuild, 
I don't think the Warriors can win if they don't win this year or potentially next year with the roster they have unless Wiseman and Kuminga take a huge jump. If I was realistically rebuilding this, I would just let Steph be here in respect to like what he's done for the team while the young guys build up and progress to the point where they can compete. But at that point, Steph would be around this age and probably at the point of having to retire which is why I didn't want to do that for this rebuild because I wanted to try to get him another championship. I'm still shocked that this roster wasn't able to make it past the Western Conference Finals though. Apologies to Warriors fans for not winning in this video, but you've won enough over the past decade. Hope everyone's doing well. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.